hello everyone. Bon dinner. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar organized by Wikimedia Tunisia. Uh, my name is Hossein, also known as Kavayashu in the Wikimedia movement. And today we are uh, organizing a webinar to interview the Wikimedian of this year, Sandy Day, for those who don't know about her. So it's uh, really an honor for us as Wikimedia Tunisia to present the Wikimedian of the year, Sandister. Uh, for those, I will just give a brief presentation about her and then we will know more about Sandister during the questions and the presentation. So Sandister is a journalist and uh, uh, who studied geography initially in the University of Ghana and then journalism in the University of Cardiff. And then she worked with many big platforms such as Al, Jaz Al Jazeera and the City FM or Enjoy FM. And now currently she's a journalist in Accra. And uh, she's been a member of the Wikimedia Ghana user group for a few years now. And recently, like two months ago, she got nominated as the Wikimedian of 2020. Welcome, Sandister. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. We are very pleased to have you among us. And uh, as I can see, we have also the board of Wikimedia Tunisia with us today. And so first, I want to say congratulations uh, personally and on behalf of the user group again. Congratulations for being the Wikimedia of the year. I think the foundation and the team couldn't choose someone better for this title this year. And uh, like, this is something like, I think they lost connection. Okay. So I would like to uh, to proceed with the questions now. Well, the first question is, how did you map the, Wiki, the Wikimedia movement for the first time? How did you reach the Wikimedia movement? And how did you uh, uh, hear about it? And what's the first impression when you have gone through the movement? and have done your first contributions? I think I knew of Wikipedia before I knew of the movement. I remember when I first heard about Wikipedia, but I do know that one day in August 2012, I think, someone, his name is Rexford, he is one of the Ghanaian community members. He sent me a tweet. And he asked me to show him an episode in that. So that was in August 2012 when I heard of Wikipedia editing. But I knew what Wikipedia was, only that I don't remember when I first heard about Wikipedia. So I would say August 2012 was when I actually was using I think my account was created around that time. And it was for me to start editing. Wikipedia. I think 
my first edit might have happened in September 2012. Um, I I couldn't class, so that is so that was my introduction to an invitation via social media by Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia. Which one as a Wikipedia editor to help build a community in Ghana. Thank you. So the second question is that, did you expect to win the 2020 of the year title this during this year? Never. Um, I know, I mean, I'm aware of the title and again, it has won it before. I also know of other people winning it every now and then when the announcement comes you hear. But this year, that was the last thing on my mind. Even last year, or even all the years I've been here, it's been the last thing on my mind because it, it's just very random. When you be there and you hear, oh, this is going to be the end of the year. So you just carry on with your life. So it was the last thing that. I, I expect it because the movement is really big and what are the chances that you will win this award, you know, for you to even think of winning it or think about that you're going to win it. Yeah, so many people to be choosing. So it was the last on my mind. I'm really sorry. I lost the internet connection for a while. Now I'm back here. I'm really sorry. Uh, if you, I'm really sorry. If you want, I can continue questioning uh, Sandister. So um, I have a question. I, I know it's quite difficult to, to talk about yourself because, but why do you think, what are the achievements that made the community choose you as the comedian of the year? What do you consider as the achievements that pushed everyone to vote for you or to nominate you, to nominate you as the comedian of the year? I, I think that first of all, the Indian community and it, we work very hard and we do very well. So it's not that difficult hearing about me and what we do here. I call something the Nian excellence is the moment. So I think we really have to go in for us. We really work hard here. So that's one thing. The fact that I love the Ghanaian community. We have about three user groups here. We have probably more coming up. We have projects running. So we have the ability. I should say. We also have the near working in a movement as well. So to me, I think one, just as being part of the Ghanaian community, you are visible. Also, one thing that over the years I have done, it's it's not by design, it's just something we're doing is I don't own my editing business, as in I just and that's it. I care about other people. I I want to see other people learn how to edit. I want to help them. I want to I just have this interest in community organizing. So through you get to help people and when people are happy with you, they need to nominate you if they are up for someone who does as relevant to their growth in the movement. I think that's sort of the second thing that got someone to mention my name. I also think that in 2020, because we're in a, a lot of times, we, we have a lot of, a lot of art time on our hands. So we're stuck home and we can't move around. So naturally, we'll find other things to do. So I found out that the Indian community, though it was a really difficult time, people were getting laid off jobs, people were getting sick, people were dying. What would be told? We didn't know the future, but during that time, we put time on our hands to edit. So we time on our hands to participate in conversations on branding, the rebranding of the media. We are not um, trying to participate in certain conversations in different communities, election for movement strategy. And so all of that, I got involved. That's the issue. I got involved. So that would be the third thing, getting involved. And with that, you you are you are likely to be nominated by someone. 
those are different ones. First, you belong to a community that is visible. Second, you help others. It's not only about you do things that others find useful. And then third, you get involved. Whatever is happening, just get involved. Who knows? You have good input and you you help the person. So when someone notices you and gets to know nature for for you see why. That's what I think. But specifically, uh, I also know that we editing coronavirus related articles was very important. This is why, because of misinformation, disinformation, and all of these things that people will peddle about the disease. So we see yeah, that that very important place for people to find information. And with the last one, yeah, I got involved and I got others involved. I got my community involved. So I know with all of that, that there could be something in there that got me chosen. Yes, this is really amazing. So if I can quote you, like you have, you have mentioned three tips, which are that you needed to help others, yeah. you need to get involved. And the third one was, I forgot, I couldn't record it. What was the third one? A community is visible. So currently in Ghana, we there are three uh, groups. We have other projects running, but in, in, in some, it's still Ghanaian working hard for the movement, if you get what I mean. It's still not, it's not about an individual. It's about, oh, project in Ghana. Oh, group in Ghana. So I belong to a very visible community. Ghana is a very visible community right now because we have so much going on now. So for me, it's being a part of the visible community and then the other two things that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So you you focused a lot on the, on the fact that you helped a lot people to learn. So what do you think uh, if you have the power as a Wikimedian of the year, what would be the value that you want people to learn from you, Wikimedians in general? If you have to choose one value that you have and that you have to transmit to other Wikimedians as a Wikimedian of the year, what do you think would be this value or what would be this principle? I think can sum it all into leadership. Sum it all into leadership. Though it's broad and vague, it's, it's just about leadership. The value I will share, if that counts as a value, will be leadership. Because a lot of my motivation have come because I I am one of the co-founders of the Ghanaian community. And when others are discouraged, support to be discouraged. When others don't want to do a certain task, our communities are run by volunteers. And of course you apply to have that. But a lot of all of those things as a co-founder you can't you can't give up. So there's some kind of being a leader. And sometimes in the lead in a leadership position you also have to deny yourself or you say something of self denial. Yes, that you want and the things that you want to do. But you have to think of the bigger picture. There are days when you are discouraged, you are annoyed. The whole thing can happen. This is a human movement, a human institution. But when you are a leader, you are not, not allowed to. But you, you can't just, you, you have to be guarded in what you do. And for me, that's a value I will give. Because the leaders, they, they go out there and they recruit. Leaders, for example, people out there, they do the recruitment. They do the, um, they do the, the, they do all of these things. What others don't want to do the, the grants teach. They sit down and they work hard and they apply for the grants when nobody else applies. So what have really leadership. So for me, I should pass um, to talk about the value that's really important. I, I would want people, everybody, both self-leadership and leadership community, it makes a difference. It, it checks your motivation. It, it, it does something to your psychology and in how you approach things in, in the movement. Of course, and leaders help. So that is where I get it from. And I think that's what I will pass on to others. To think like a leader, behave like a leader, love like a leader. 
and all of that. Yes, I want to focus on something as a potential leader group or for all the affiliates in general, as maybe uh, advisors to get more people involved uh, in the movement in a more efficient way. Because I think that probably now it's even bigger, the problem, I mean, but we have a problem or difficulties with getting others involved. I think leadership, as you just mentioned, is one main key for that to ensure that. But also, what can the user groups or the affiliates in general can do as an institution to guarantee uh, more involvement from the community in general? Okay, so very early on, when I joined the movement, I had a conversation with my friend, and we we were asking our comedians made or they won, you know, and he he was. That no, trying to wait for the trying to be able to understand those who really understand those who really want to be part of the movement who need all the question. And I know you need you need So for me, I think one way that we can organize effectively is to just ask ourselves. Do we really believe that comedians can be made, or people are just born with comedians? Or is that? And suddenly they are just good by themselves. They understand what they need to do. So if you believe that people need to be helped, or people need to be groomed, then you are well on your way to getting across this barrier where this difficulty of being able to, to raise more editors or to use more editors. One thing I've noticed is that events, events, that if you are resourced to do so, don't joke with your event because a lot of people have that whole approach to having a middle woman, woman teach them to edit rather than they do it themselves alone. People want to meet, people want to come to you. People want to do online sessions. People want to have tools to teach them to edit. So whether you're doing the same thing or to do digital resource, whatever, that needs to happen for any recruitment to be successful. There's a follow-up because a lot of people give up at the first try of work. A lot of people give up. So the gap or the time between the, the first encounter with Wikipedia and the next time they have an issue, you have to try to close that gap. So quickly, while the interest is there and they've had the first editor call, you realize that you know, the first workshop, you realize that questions could come, how to do this, how to do that. Back with the second event or a third or what you need to do, you don't lose the people that you spent so much money and time recruiting. And then offer them membership. Sometimes people do not even know that there's a different that we see and being a member of a user group, those two things are not the same. A lot of people don't just have enough information to keep them engaged and interested. And then I also think that in communities when you recruit people, one way you can get them to stay and get them to own what is happening is to give them roles in the community. It might be a volunteer role, but it doesn't matter. It's just them opportunity to need something. So if there's someone who's interested in gender issues, there is art and feminism. Make them coordinate your art and feminism events. If there's someone who is interested in history or something, get the grand project. Always just get people involved in things they're interested in. And then I would say make editing non negotiable because sometimes we get over we get all excited with other activities but the key one, which is editing. So people understand that it's even something more an active exercise where I think you should record a certain number of bits, record an active editor, and all of that. And then there is someone who's struggling with uh, you know, internet. 
I think in Ghana right now, we do something for free love creator where we give people stipends to buy that to, to participate in projects. Grants is, is helpful. You just explain to them and you should be able to get a, a, some kind of support for these volunteers. So for me, that's how I look. I look at things. And also, you might want to look into communities that exist in your country that attract young and technology minded or people interested in technology because the methods that we have right now all have some other digital technology interest. Open markets, people who are social media enthusiasts, people who are part of Google school groups and stuff like that. You realize that such communities are able to give you very solid methods. Because they're already digital minded, they're already interested in digital content creation. I have seen most people are also very motivated. So this, this is usually a collection of the key things that I've used to get people involved and interested. And yeah, but it doesn't rule out the fact that people still get and get demotivated. So as a user group, if looking at it from a user group perspective, just of the user group has to work hard to. Make the user group sustainable and fun. So, Wikimedia, for example, we've been for eight years, and after seven, we've never really um, operated as a non profit that kind of structure. But we realized that it's about time we do that. So, we are waiting to get that done and then up to that level. Because now the membership has grown and people have needs. we need to think about staff, among other things. So, the user group also needs to grow to sustain interest. Some people will talk about capacity building among leadership. It's true, that also matters. If the leader is not, you don't know how to organize events, you don't know how to create interesting things for people to stay engaged, you could lose a lot of lead, um, a lot of recruits because they come, they get what they leave. So it's it's this is a very long answer to a simple question. All of the factors I've mentioned in it. Okay, thank you. thank you very much for this uh, important recommendation. I think uh, the whole movement was working on the recommendation recommendations for for twenty thirty. I think this is really precious uh, input that can fit in the recommendations document. But now we've been talking in a general way for now. I, th uh, As a Tunisian, as, a, as an African person, I want to take advantage of this opportunity and s dig a little bit in the African question. Uh, my first question is that we can probably, be, because relate to what you would say now, is what are the main challenges that you have faced as a Wikimedian while implementing your, uh, in your projects on a local scale in Ghana, uh, regional scale in Africa, because I know there's all, a lot of obstacles uh, when we want to build the project between the African countries. So what are these challenges? Or maybe you can give us some of them, the most, the biggest ones. And main, and most importantly, uh, mostly how, could, how did you manage to overcome these obstacles? What were your solutions and the alternatives you took? I think my, my biggest challenge and that of the, my colleagues that I work with in Wikimedia Ghana has been the over-reliance on volunteer work. This is not stressed enough. A lot of people disagree. But sometimes you really need people who are not there because they, they want to. They're there because they kind of motivation. I think I lost you for a moment. There's a difference between that kind of motivation. That not everything, you can't rely on volunteers all the time. I think that has been one of the biggest challenges for me. That's the first thing because I I am good with organizing events. I'm happy to have people and teach them. But after the rapid run ends, 
and I go back to work on a Monday. Maybe I have an event on Saturday, and there are 20 people who are excited. Monday, they come to the group. Okay, so we need help with this. We need help with that. Who is around to help them? Who is around to coach them on their own time? Everybody's going back to work. So a lot of the things and the care being left in the hands of volunteers is not all the time that that model is successful. So that has been a challenge because sometimes we volunteers so something that I have realized that to me a lot and some of my colleagues is is relying reliance, not relying is volunteers good work, but over reliance on volunteers. Now, how I got past that, I never did. I still haven't. <laughs> I never did. It's that you have grant money for reimbursement that you need to write a report on, you have a grant target to meet. You can't go to the grant office and say, well, I wasn't too successful because of the TSS and that. Sounds like you can excuse it. But so found this a means of just completing the project. And just being successful. That's all. That's how I come back. I just or they won't well. I, I I do stuff myself. Especially when I am the grantee because I'm not the only grantee in Media Ghana Group. There are others, but when it, it was an honor to put and write on that I a lot of people just get up and go do the work. And sometimes they have to change change the policies. You see, come and get your lesson. All of that is hard work. If you, if you have time to get fired, if not, all reliance on volunteer work has, has a, a value. But for editing it, so say that I have been lucky, maybe because the name really indicates that, or indicates that I have worked on those topics. I've never been harassed on those grounds on the weekends. I don't ever remember a time somebody try to bully me because I was a woman. Often my issue is about being African. When I create an art and somebody says, Well you can't say this also, so you can't try to do this because of the UK they don't say something like that. Then you know I I used to I can get feedback with that. I'm not too happy now because then what is notable and what what is relevant sometimes our context are and being an experienced comedian, I know I'm not going to put things notable on the week. I've gone past it. I'm in my eighth year. Why would I do that? But the issue remains that the other party does not agree because media from a different culture and they want to actually delete it or offer it or, or you change it to their, what, their own recommendation and stuff like that. So as far as this in a the only challenge I face, but a lot of times I am successful in, in doing in doing my work with everything. I'm happy I came. Yeah. I'm really sorry, but my internet is not the best. So now I, I, I think it's a I'm in a place where there's no where I'm not gonna I think I think what? it's a thing for twenty the year twenty twenty. Where we keep talking in and out of because I yes. internet and we, we just have to be online. Yeah, it's a signature twenty twenty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think it's because of lockdown everyone is now using the internet because there are there are places. So the the internet flow is very low, and I have mobile internet, so it's not the best. Yes. But yeah, yeah. So I my following question. Yeah. 
The one, the, uh, the the first one is uh, Wikimedia project. One is as a Wikipedia. We, uh, yes, uh, we... yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, okay. Yes. Can you hear me better now? So again, I'm really sorry for this logistical issue. Um, so I have two last, last questions. The first one is, about the gender, do you think that being a woman in a leadership position in the movement in an African country was a challenge, challenging in itself? And how could you overcome, if it was the case, a challenge? And what's your advice for the other women or female, uh, uh, like any person who identifies as a female who is in interested in the movement and wants to be in a leadership position in it? And the second question is, as a Wikimedian of the year, what do you think this title can help you with in your project? And especially in Africa, I assume you have some ideas for things in an international scale, but for your local community and for an Africa, the African continent, what do you think this award or this title will bring to you for your work? Okay, for the question on being a woman in leadership position in the movement, if I if I got you quickly, the challenges that come with I think that I just try not to have an issue where there's no issue. So to me I don't ever think that being a woman has caused changes in the work my affiliate level. Even if it has, I think it would just be the thing about you know, a woman that is outspoken, uh, a woman that, okay, if a man is not outspoken, nobody has a problem. But if it's a woman, then he's labeled as iron, iron lady. In my context, that's what you are called. You're an iron lady or you're given names. But still, I never had anybody come up to me and say anything like to my face to this thing. Anything that could say behind my back, you got that in time. I didn't hear it. So I don't have any issues there at all. So but in in the movement, if I could say something to my sisters in the movement, I would say it's our time. It's our time because now we're getting all the education we need. Now we're getting all the empathy we need because we have so much to deal with and put aside to be effective wherever we are. We are also getting opportunities that we deserve. It's not about even needing, we deserve them because we were just as hard. We are just as smart. We are just as powerful. We, we have everything. We, we have everything. So I would say that it's time. Right now is not odd for women to lead. It's not strange for women to get anything done. Like, no, it's not. And we are lucky to be in a movement that is even led by a woman. So we have no excuse. We have no excuse not to perform. Not that we are required to perform being a woman. That's also not a good thing for motivation. Just be yourself and know that these are good times for women. 
whenever you find out that somebody mistreats you because you're a woman on the wiki, offline in a certain project, you can make a case or you can just ignore the person. But it should never get to you because I believe that this is our time. We are getting more opportunity than uh, earlier women ever got. We have more recognition, more acceptance to be ourselves than ever. So I think this is a good time to be a woman, especially in the movement. With, with, with so many leadership positions going to women in the movement, and I think that's that's just it. And I think the last question was, Wikimedian of the Year and what I hope to do for the continent and correct? Is that correct? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I thought my microphone. Yes, I thought my microphone was uh, open, so I was talking. So I repeat the question. The question is, how do you think your title as the Wikimedian of the Year will help you to better implement your projects on the local and the regional scale? Okay. I think that the title makes you visible. With the title, I doubt I would have been here Sunday. If I was being, if you were throwing the spotlight for me for a different project, I would understand. And of course, I would have to be interested in Tunisia's work and relationships with Tunisia. But I am here because I'm W-O-T-Y. So I think the title comes with some visibility. That's one thing. It's, it's with that, people know you, have about the work that you have done. They can ask you for help if they need it because now they know what you're capable of. It's one tragedy that is possessing the ability to solve a problem, but you're not able to solve it because you know you can talk and it's coming to you. So I think the title, Wikimedian of the Year, you say, well, it's not just me. Somebody who really wants to use the title to do good, what it does is to make you accessible. Makes you accessible to, to people who want to reach out for, for things. People who want to reach out for cooperation. People who want to reach out for anything at all that, that relates and that has to do with the movement. People would, because you have the title and you open. I should say, too, that foundation helping me make decisions on what to do right now with this title. The comms team have been very helping me with press issues, getting the story around. I have I mentioned all of them here right now. But there's no time, but they've all been helpful, very, very helpful in trying to help me think of ways we can use the title for good work for the next 300 and something days. That's it. That's yeah. For, for, for over the year that I, I hold the title. So for me, it's about visibility. And then what I intend to do is in any of the press engagements that I have, especially locally, which is really dear to my heart, is to address some of the issues that every day people come to me with that can I pay to get my Wikipedia location out of I say you don't even have to pay. You are a notable person and so that's that. A whole lot of people still believe they need to do something to be on a week even if they're notable. A whole lot of people think that Wikipedia is some kind of blog. A whole lot of people think there's so many misconceptions. And you deal with the media of the year, people wanted to know what does that even mean? So I would want to use my platform to unpack what Wikipedia is and what the Wikimedia movement is, when I get the opportunity to do so. And then the next best will also be to leadership in, in the movement. 
feel that when the movement has good leaders in the various affiliates and communities, the work is 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 likely to get done. It's less likely to be active because people know what they're doing. They're they're good leaders. Good leaders attract yeah, the right kind of people into communities. So I think that yeah, leadership will be the next thing also that I want to give a platform to talk. I think that was really amazing. Thank you so much, Sandister, for sharing all this. Like, personally, I'm really proud and really happy to know that for the second year in a row, a woman who is African yeah. is the holder of the title. And this is really, I think this is representative of all the work and all the effort that have been done for the few for the last few years on building a community that is inclusive and yeah. that is a female friendly in a way, let's say, because as the statistics say, the majority of the movement is men, cis men, and most of the, I mean, years ago, it was mostly led by cis men, and now it's the, the, the scene is changing. So I think uh, I ask all the questions that were prepared by the user group. Now we give the floor for the audience. If they have any questions to ask, I don't know if there are any questions uh, that has been sent to us, to to Sandister, I mean. Um, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Just a reminder, this interview is recorded and it and will be available for everyone, for anyone who's interested in rewatching it on YouTube. It will be, the link is shared already on the Facebook page of the user group. And uh, so. Um, I think right now I am doubling down on anything I've ever done in the movement. Um, I think today for those of us who are applying for annual grants, today is the final day, but I should say that my group, Media Ghana User Group Community, come from we have put in a, uh we are putting in a proposal for some amazing things to do so i know i'll be playing a very big role in all of those activities so as usual i'm going to go about work this time we have been trying new things innovative things that we after eight years of being around we're probably just and there's no harm in trying so have a new thing coming in my community, so I'm I'm happy to be a part. Of it. But because there is a median of it here also, like I mentioned, the foundation. I mean, I've spoken to Asa, um, Dora, the whole team, at least people are reaching out for things. People are reaching out to ask for help in one thing or the other. I said because of the disability that they were giving me. So I am just making myself available to make sure that I make enough impact that I can happy about when the new person is, is, is enough. By then I should have done some good work. So I am open. I it's not a fixed script because I know that people are going to or pop in every now and then I can't say oh, I'm not going to help you because I already have what I want to do in life. I'm available and anybody is free to reach out to me. I've had advice from the community just to come telling me what I should do with the title what I could do. 
suspicious what to do with title analysis. There's so much to consider, but in all of it, I am really excited, very excited, yeah, to do something with the title. So that's what I have coming up. I hope I answered your question. I think I asked for a, a lot of questions already. And <laughs> thank you again for all the answers you gave. It really, I think this is really good input for us as a user group and for all the community in general. I think uh, I should also thank on behalf of the user group, all the audience who have been watching us for the last 40 minutes, at, at the, I guess. Uh, we were very honored by having you here today with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations for the title. You really deserve it. You are Thank really you. a role model for all the Wikimedians, especially the women and the African ones. And, and I really, I wish you all the best for the rest. And I, I, I think that's it. Thank you again and have a good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you. Yes, wow. thank you for for inviting me. Yeah. yeah. And I look forward. To, I look forward to the next Lisa. That would be nice. We can work on a couple of things. So. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I th thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, keep in, uh, keep looking at our Facebook page and our for our, our our meta page for the news about the user group at the next events. And thank you, Sandister. And we hope to have you again among us physically and remotely in our events. And enjoy your evening. Bye. Enjoy. Bye.